Minhua Liu. Please correct my pronunciation. Minhua. Minhua. Minhua, Minhua Liu. Good. Uh, Minhua, what's your? What are your current activities? I teach at the Mantra Institute. I train interpreters of the language combination of uh, English and Mandarin, and I also am a conference interpreter. I work mm -hmm. for international conferences. And in addition to that, I also do research and research-related activities. For mm -hmm. example, I'm the co-editor of the journal Interpreting, and I also serve on the AIC Research Committee. Mm -hmm. AIC is the International Association of, of Conference, Conference Interpreters, interpreters right? yes. And we do have a research committee, mm -hmm. and from time to time we will uh, be involved in some very interesting uh, projects. For, mm -hmm. us, for example, so far, we're doing this uh, interpreters of, uh, you know, a project that has to do with interpreters' cognitive psychol uh, cognitive abilities and how aging affects the cognitive oh, uh, really? abilities. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, we get better with age, don't we? Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, interpreters definitely fare better I mean, in terms of yeah. uh, the decline of the cognitive, cognitive abilities because uh, for the fact that they are bilinguals. To oh, it with. stops Alzheimer's. Right. Maybe. If you're doing this, do you well, think that? Then don't, yeah? be, don't be too hopeful. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just read some press reports on bilingualism and learning a language and yeah. keeping your mind active. Okay. And um, I also advise uh, students on their uh, thesis and their dissertations. Okay. Well, at, here at, at Monterey or Not in other institutions? Here, uh, in Taiwan. In some Taiwan. Of the graduate schools in Taiwan. They, they okay. do have a. PhD program at the Taiwan Normal Normal University. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, they train PhD students in the good. field of Very translation good. and interpretation. And you do that from here, or do you go remotely? To, you're from Taiwan originally, right? I am. Okay. Yes, I am. Tell us. Well, I wanted to talk about the, the, the research because you, you're co-editor of, of of the journal Interpreting. Mm -hmm. um, how's it How's that going? It's uh, it's going well. It's uh, I think the journal is going very strongly uh, because um, I don't know whether the field is more people are entering this field yeah. or people are more desperate to uh, to publish. We just get a lot of uh, submissions. Yeah. So and so interpreting studies is very active yeah. at the moment. I I would say I would say definitely yes. Uh, you know, compared with it, you know from the time when I started and I mm. started doing my PhD. Uh, research, uh, it is a good time, and mm -hmm. uh, we see more and more people entering, it, you know, the field of the interpreting research. Of, of course, a lot of them are practitioners uh, from the beginning, but uh, so they bring with them all this experience, and then uh, and then uh, start doing research. I think this is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. What about your own trajectory? Uh, if we go back to when you were 22, 23, 24, where were you? What were you doing? I was in Taiwan. I was a, uh, working as a teaching assistant at Foreign University. That's where I got my uh, undergraduate mm -hmm. uh, degree. And uh, dreaming about going for a uh, de degree in art history, believe it or not. Oh, really? Yes. Completely different. From yes. That. Okay. Uh, either studying in the United States or mm -hmm. in Europe. But, uh, but you know, when the, um, the international advisor of this Montreal Institute went to Taiwan to promote the newly established uh, TNI program, the Chinese TNI program. Mm -hmm. I was in the audience, and I got very curious. And uh, I just think, well, that was a nice thing to, to, to try. So I, I applied to the institute, and I got accepted. Okay. And that, that changed everything in my life. So you, you would have been in the first Chinese program here? Yeah, I, I was. Really? I was wow. one okay. of the first uh, group of students of the Chinese TNI program. Okay. So you came here, you did a two-year master's. I did a two-year master's, mm -hmm. but I also needed to write a th thesis. Mm -hmm. So at that time, students did have to write a thesis. Some still do. They don't have to, but they, they do. don't have yeah. to. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you, your research would have started then? No, That's actually, sort of... there was a translation. You know, that was a, uh, a partial translation of a book, mm -hmm. and I had to do a, a self-critique yes. of my own trans translation. Yeah. So that would be considered uh, my thesis. Okay. No, my, my real research uh, didn't start, experience didn't start until I got into the PhD program. Okay. So let's, let's just follow up through you. You've got a two-year master's. You yeah. leave Monterey. Where do you go back to Taiwan? I or? went back to Taiwan and I went back to Furen because uh, by then Furen has set up a, the first 
translation and in interpretation program of Taiwan mm -hmm. in Taiwan. And so I started uh, teaching there and working as a conference interpreter when, at the same time. When was time. that? That was 1988. Okay. That was, was that Eti Arjona? Eti Arjona, yes. Eti Arjona Zeng. Yep. She was our founding director. Okay, right. And uh, so that was the very first program in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So we really had a very nice start. Uh, of course, now we have more than, I would say there are seven uh, mm -hmm. graduate programs in Taiwan. For such a small place, we have seven, seven uh, graduate programs. Um, so, I taught, you know, at a graduate institute for several years, and I just felt that my teaching was not progressing. Were you interpreting? I was interpreting at the same, at the same time? time. Okay, I was so you get the professional time. experience with and the, the teaching. Teach right? Without any training in pedagogy, I started as a ah, teacher. That's of course, it's pretty common. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a common story. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, I, after several years of teaching, I just felt that my teaching was not, progr was not progressing. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was thinking about getting a doctorate, I think, probably getting a PhD mm -hmm. would help me become a good, a better teacher. So I applied to the uh, program of foreign language education at the University of Texas mm -hmm. uh, at Austin, about, uh, at Texas at Austin. And... Uh, you know, wanted to do to uh, learn from the field of foreign language education, mm -hmm. but I became so fascinated uh, by the field of cognitive psychology. So I started taking uh, some courses in cognitive psychology, and eventually wrote my dissertation in on the topic that's related to cognitive psychology. Mm -hmm. um, it's about working memory and uh, the expertise development of simultaneous interpretation. Okay. Right. Yeah. So Austin had nothing to do with André Lefebvre being at Austin then at all. Say that again. André Lefebvre was working in literary yes, translation was, in the same place, but, but a completely different field. Then. It, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So I, you know, I didn't have the fortune to personally meet him. I didn't really take courses with him. Mm -hmm. And later on, when I still was a student there, he passed away. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it was such a pity. Mm. Uh, because, um, you know, now I'm getting more and more interested in, in knowing more about translation studies. Mm -hmm. But at that time, in, after teaching for, teaching interpreting for so many years, I was very focused, particularly when I wanted to go for a PhD. Yes. I was very focused. Uh, I just wanted to That's do... a good thing for a PhD. Well, I don't know. I but, wish you know, my PhD students were so focused. Like this, you know? Good. I don't good. really, I didn't really look at... But you that. said it was to help you teach better. But the cognitive stuff, I guess development of expertise, Yes, yes is that yes. directly applicable to, to the training process? I would say no, no. But, mm. you know, I would say, like, the value of research mm. is not in its direct application in uh, practice or in teaching. And somehow it's difficult for people in our field to understand that because we're a very practice-oriented mm -hmm. field. But um, I think there are a lot of uh, basic research we can do that will eventually, you know, benefit our sure. field. And of course, you know, the field I'm, uh, I'm particularly interested in, cognitive psychology, you cannot really, uh, you know, the way we do research, the way people do research mm -hmm. in this field cannot uh, be, you know, the, the result cannot be easily applied. Well, I bet you're, you're doing that here in Monterey. You're teaching research on interpreting. Right. I two interpreting that. students, the people two who interpreting students. top level conference interpreter, yes. you know, ready to go into the market. I bet you can make them interested in it, though, in what's going on in their, in their brain. They seem yeah, to. So, yeah. They seem to be interested. You know, without even saying directly applicable, it's just saying, well, if things are happening there. Let's find out. What's going exactly. On? Uh, I was pleasantly surprised in a way uh, because, I mean, of, co of course, I changed the content of my course every year. And uh, this year, there was just a heavier uh, focus on the cognitive side of everything. Mm. And, for example, I spent probably two classes, two, uh, the time of two classes, on memory, the basics of memory and attention. Uh, and it, anything has to do with expertise development, mm -hmm. not necessarily have to do with interpreting, mm -hmm. because um, you know we still need a lot of research on interpreting and interpreters. 
uh, and surprisingly, the students were actually very, very interested. Um, so I think, you know, uh, I don't know whether this uh, the whole atmosphere has changed, or the students, or just the particular group of students I have got, you know, in the past two or three years, or. Um, well, I find the conference interpreting students very intelligent and inquisitive. Okay. And also very critical if it doesn't seem it's going to help them at all, but That's good. Uh, but, uh, yeah. but but yeah, they're good people to teach. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. We left your career. You got your doctorate. Where do you go then from Austin? I went back to Foren. Okay. Because yeah. I uh, I was actually uh, I was on what I call it on leave mm -hmm. from Foren. So I went back to Foren and continued to teach. But uh, uh, I taught more. I started to teach more research related courses mm -hmm. and eventually became director of that mm -hmm. program. So I did that for a couple of years, and uh, about 10 years ago, and I also have a very short uh, uh, experience with a, a laboratory of, of cognitive psychology that where I uh, was working as a postdoc. In and, Taiwan? In Taiwan, okay. at another university, mm -hmm. um, uh, because I presented my uh, research, uh, my PhD research, and they were interested, and they asked me what I wanted to become a postdoc. Mm -hmm. at their laboratory. So I did. And uh, so I started to learn more about how people do brain research. Mm -hmm. um, so that, but you know, my stay there was very short, so I wouldn't claim that I know much about the brain, about brain research, but that's definitely, uh, you know, I became very you know, interested mm -hmm. because it's closely related to cognitive psychology. Uh, but about 10 years ago, we, uh, the family decided to move here to the United States. Mm -hmm. I continue to do research uh, for the Taiwanese government, for the Ministry of Education, because they wanted to start a uh, certification program for translators, interpreters. Mm -hmm. So I was doing that mm -hmm. for six years. And um, and three years ago, I joined the Montreal Institute. Good. Okay. That's it. Yeah, very honored to have you. Oh, yeah, thank you. I think. What kind of research should we be doing? And I'm more interested in, in what's become of interpreting studies. I mean, if your focus is on cognitive aspects, mm -hmm. that's usually conference interpreting and yes. that's and simultaneous. Right. But a lot of work now is done in whatever you want to call it, community dialogue, you know, yes. you know, non-simultaneous work. Right. Is that changing the nature of the field, do you think? I would say, I would say so, yes, because uh, just from the 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 topics of the submissions in the submitted articles to interpreting yeah. we could definitely see uh, a change in the, the general direction that people become interested mm. in this field and we see I would say we see a, mo a healthier uh, mix you know of uh, uh, different p perspectives uh, the, of uh, interpreting we we still get uh, uh, research uh, you know and uh, cognitive psychology but we also have uh, research done, uh, see research done uh, on, you know, so using uh, uh, paradigms in sociology. Yes, yes. And, uh, or um, even, uh, for example, communications or other, other related fields. So I think it's uh, the general direction of research done in this field is definitely, it go, I, I think it's going to, uh, Going towards, towards the social, the right. away from the a cognitive, or, or? A little away, yeah. a little away from the yeah. cognitive, I would say. Uh, if you just talk about the quantity of uh, the different topics uh, of, the, of the submissions we got, uh, we definitely see a trend of moving away mm -hmm. from cognitive psychology. But I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that concern issues of scientific rigor? I mean, in, in Cognitive research, there's that whole tradition of psychology, controlled experiment. Yes. The more you go social, the harder it is to control variables. Is, is that a problem in the well, field? Well, no, no. Uh, I would say, well, in general. In general, I think in terms of the rigor, methodology, uh, you know, rigor in methodology, I think as a whole field, we need to improve. I mm -hmm. mean, but it's good saying that there are more and more people who are receiving training and uh, in doing research. So we definitely have seen a continuous uh, uh, progress in terms of the, the rigor uh, mm -hmm. in the methodology we okay. use. But um, 
No, I wouldn't say that uh, uh, experiments are the only mm -hmm. methodology that's considered uh, rigorous because I know uh, qualitative studies can be very rigorous mm -hmm. if you do it the right way, if you uh, code your data you know, uh, in a very systematic way, you can get very, sure. very uh, good results. Mm -hmm. And that's a rigorous process. If a student came to you tomorrow and mm -hmm. said they wanted to do a doctoral dissertation in, in, on interpreting, mm -hmm. would you recommend any particular issues that they look at? Or are there, are there any particular areas you think we need research in? Yes, I would say all kinds, all kinds okay. of research. Mm -hmm. But because I, I'm probably a little bit biased because I, I'm interested in cognitive psychology, so I would say uh, we still need research done uh, in exploring the core abilities of interpreters of interpretation. And for example, uh, we talk about that a little bit. Bilinguals um, they're known to uh, to have better central executive mm -hmm. uh, function, mm -hmm. the, the attention, the attention mechanism. Yes. And uh, so, uh, so it's very interesting if we can see what the interpreters, they actually, they have even more efficient mm -hmm. uh, central executive function. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, bilinguals, the reason why they have better central executive function is because they have to uh, activate, inhibit one of the two languages all the time. Mm -hmm. But interpreters, because they have to do it not only constantly, do this not con only constantly, they have to do it professionally. And they have to do it very precisely and all the time facing this time constraint and also the constraint of actually not conveying your own thoughts but the other people's thoughts. So I, I think it has something to do, I think it has some influence on how interpreters' mental lexicon is organized, for example. How words and terms are retrieved, are mm -hmm. encoded, and then retrieved later on. So I think uh, this is back to what we talk about basic research. This probably mm -hmm has, you know, broader uh, implications in other fields than, mm, than sure. in interpreting. But I think it's a good thing. Uh, sure. You know, I think as a group, interpreters, because of the nature of interpretation um, that made this group of people a perfect, the perfect candidate to be studied, uh, you know, uh, on human attention. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. And I would also say that I think, uh, well, back to pedagogy, I think as a field, we lack uh, longitudinal studies. Mm -hmm. We yeah. do not have ongoing observation of actually how interpretation skills or translation skills are acquired. So I think we need that kind of uh, research. And I, if, uh, I will, of course, you know, it's time consuming, but I think it's very important. And that's related to also the third type of research uh, that's also related to what I do, testing. Mm -hmm. And if you know more about the core abilities of the interpreters, you know, from the, these uh, longitudinal studies I just mentioned, mm -hmm. and you know, we can do better assessment, we can do better testing. Because sure. I have this experience, you know, with doing the certification examination, and it, it's tricky. It's tricky to whenever it comes to evaluate a performance. Mm -hmm. It's a very tricky issue. So we need definitely need more research. Okay. In this. You know, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay.